Strobel Kane again today. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these uh, steam engines that I made some time ago. These are uh, little oscillating engines or wobblers sometimes we, uh, we call them. And uh, although these engines are all uh, look alike, there are slight variations in most of them. And uh, first of all, let me show you the patterns that, that I use to make uh, these. I don't have any castings, raw castings to show you, but there's a a simple little base. Here is the uh, upright frame or pedestal and it's a split pattern. It's two pieces. This little uh, stem that you see on the bottom is uh, turned down and is made uh, to fit into the base and it's just held in there with Loctite sealant. Here's the uh, cylinder pattern. It's also a split pattern, two pieces. And again, these are the core prints on the end there. And the core prints uh, make an impression in the sand mold that holds the core. Now, here's one of my stock cores made out of sand. It's half inch in diameter. It's three or four inches long. And I use these uh, for several different engines and I just cut them off to the appropriate length. Now, this uh, core uh, is covered in one of my other videos. Be sure and watch my many other videos. It's nothing more than white silica sand mined over in Ottawa, Illinois. And actually, it's a little coarse for what I'm doing here. It's sandblasting sand. And uh, the binder is uh, sodium silicate, which is sometimes called water glass. And if that's baked in an oven or if carbon dioxide is uh, introduced to it, it, it gets quite hard. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, sodium silicate is the uh, product that they're using or had used in cash for clunkers, Obama's idea, and all those engines in those cars were destroyed. They drained out the oil and put sodium silicate in it, ran them briefly, and the engine just stopped for good. So, it's a, sodium silicate is pretty common, uh, cheap product. Okay, we're done with the patterns. There's a couple other little patterns here too. There'd be the uh, uh, the crank here, and all of these uh, uh, flywheels are made out of steel, and that's quite a job to do that. And uh, uh, because of the, uh, this project is why I went into those stock flywheels that I use on some of my other engines that are made out of lead, so I don't have to waste a lot of time making flywheels. But uh, what we have here is. Uh, the first one that I made is single acting. That means, uh, see that's open in the bottom of the cylinder there. And uh, the valving is such that it's like an internal combustion engine. We only have a power stroke when the air or the steam is on the, the top, forcing it down. And uh, inertia of the flywheel is causing it to uh, rebound into that one position, that upper position. Uh, and this is satisfactory, but uh, the uh, two... Uh, two-stroke or the uh, double-acting engines run a little bit better and a little bit smoother. And you can see that there's a bottom on this uh, cylinder and uh, the uh, valving is such that we have uh, air going into both the top and the bottom. So we have a power stroke when it's going down and a power stroke when it's coming up. And these are all about the same. I've changed some of the dimensions on some of them, and uh, I've milled it off in different spots. And uh, this is just a horizontal version of it, and uh, all I did there was to uh, fasten the base under the side instead of the bottom, just for a little variety. <clears throat> now uh, I'm going to run these here in a second for you. They all run about the same. They're simple engines, they're so easy to make, and they work every time. They're not fussy like the Sterling engines. Now, sometimes I get emails of uh, people saying, well, how did you fasten the head on there? Or this piece. I am a big fan of Loctite bearing mount or bearing sealant, and I just make a, kind of a press fit here for the head, and then I put some Loctite on it, and I put it into position, and it will stay there basically forever unless you, if you want to get it off, you can heat it. I never have needed to get it off. 
but that does away with the nightmare of those tiny little 440 screws and the threading and the breaking of tiny taps and uh, really speeds up the, the project uh, uh, and uh, that, that's one thing I like to do and some of my other parts are Loctited in too for instance this brass bearing that goes into the side of the uh, pedestal here is Loctited into place and that Loctite sets up real fast uh, in an hour or so you know you're on to the, the next step uh, also this piece here is Loctited onto the rod and the piston is Loctited onto the rod so I've used that uh, uh, product extensively in, in these little engines There's one thing I may not have made clear when I was talking about the cores. The core, of course, is used to uh, form the, uh, the actual bore of the cylinder. Of course, that's just uh, roughly done, and I'm, I uh, drill and, and ream that out or bore it then so I have a good finish. But that also helps to prevent shrinkage. Here's some of that bearing mount that I was talking about, and this comes in different... Uh, uh, flavors so to speak uh, but this is one of my favorite products okay we'll run these now and I've just got uh, a little eighth inch air hose here and the inlet on this particular one is on the bottom and we uh, that one was even self starting when I turned the air on and I'm running that at about 10 pounds per square inch the compressor just kicked on so I hope you can hear me Let's run one of the other ones here. This one too is double acting. The double acting one is, uh, they do have a dead spot on the top and the bottom, but in any other position they are uh, more or less self-starting. The exhaust air, of course, is coming out of this little hole and this little hole. This is one of the earlier ones that I made, and uh, this piece down here is steel, it's not a casting, and there's a little steel bearing down there rather than brass. It, and the, you can see the base is a little bit different too, but if you make a series of any engines, you, you make improvements as you, uh, as you go along. There's a little shaft holding the uh, uh, cylinder onto the pedestal, and then there's a spring and a nut and a washer there that allows it to wobble freely. You do need good alignment and careful machining when you do this. Uh, all of the practices of a good machinist will will show up uh, as you uh, complete your engine. There should be no binding or tight spots. It should be free in all positions as you turn it around. If you got binding, there's something that you did wrong or, or inaccurate on. Hope you enjoyed looking at these little uh, wobbler oscillating engines. This is uh, Tubal Kane saying so long for now.